You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until tonight Hey everybody, Brian Johnson here with 7 Minute Security Today we're continuing our series on building a $500 pen testing lab. Now in part one, I covered some of the hardware pieces you'll need to acquire to get this lab up and running. And in today's episode, I wanna focus on the storage and network configuration in order to get this thing to sync. So I use some Ubiquiti gear here at home and I just wanna briefly show you what I had to do to get network all set to go. I made a new DHCP server for, I'm just calling it my DMZ or my hacking network, and that's going to be on 192.168.55.x network. And then the only other piece you need to configure really from the network side is, well, two things. Number one, make sure you've got a corresponding VLAN. So as you can see here, I've created VLAN 55 for my DMZ slash hacking network. And then also, there's a great knowledge base article from Ubiquity on how to lock down a guest network. And essentially what this does is make sure that your guest network, or in this case my pen test network, can't pass traffic out to any other networks, nor can any other networks pass traffic to it. And that will make sure if I'm doing something stupid that would normally affect my entire network, uh, it's, it's only wreaking havoc on my pen test network. So uh, read through this article and uh, make sure all these rules are in place and enforced uh, before, you, before you go any further and actually are building out VMs and doing pen testing. All right, so let's hop back to our ESXi server and I just wanna take a look first at networking. Um, this NUC only has one NIC, so it makes setting up port groups pretty easy as you can see I've I've added a bunch here but if you wanted to add a new one uh, you would just click on add port group uh, give it some sort of name that makes sense like my hacking uh, let's see my hacking VLAN 111 or whatever the corresponding VLAN was you add it boom it's in and it's ready to play now let's take a look under storage and if you were seeing this server booted up for the first time you would want to go under new data store and ESXi would kind of walk you through creating new data stores you know detecting the drives making partitions if you wanted to that kind of stuff um, I've got no space to allocate because all my drives are accounted for and installed but that's this is the area you'd go to set up your drives for the first time Uh, one little anal retentive thing I did that I thought would help me stay organized is I, I sliced off a little bit of storage called ISOs and uh, plopped all my active ISOs here. So if you had uh, a new one that you wanted to upload, it's really just as easy as, uh, as clicking on upload and then just browse to wherever it is on your hard drive. Uh, give it a little time to upload and then it's uh, it's ready to use and you can start installing some VMs. So actually I think we are ready to do that. So why don't we get started? Let's build out uh, our first box, which I think it would be appropriate to build a Kali box. So let's uh, create a new virtual machine. I'm going to choose, uh, let's see, I'm gonna, just gonna name it. I'm gonna name everything PT hyphen something, just so visually as I look through the VMs, um, that those kind of stand out and it makes sense to me. So I'm just going to choose Ubuntu 64-bit as my OS type. And then now I'm going to choose where to actually store the machine. So I just am going to throw it all on my, my main drive, my virtual machines drive, which is the uh, uh, the big SSD in this box. And let's beef this puppy up a little bit. Going to give it four processors, four gigs of RAM. Let's have a slightly bigger hard drive. And then here, here are all those port groups or those those uh, VLANs that I set up, so I'm gonna stick it in my DMZ hacking VLAN. And then I'm just going to browse to connect the Kali ISO so we can get started with laying down the OS. 
can double check that everything looks good before you deploy. You can always change this stuff later, but that looks pretty good to me. So let's power this guy up, get the OS build going. Now you'll notice here in the video that I had to change gears because Safari for some reason would not display uh, the display. So I flipped over to Chrome and then everything was good to go. Okay, so we'll buzz through the screens here and pretty soon we will have our Cali box built. And one of the very first things I like to do is uh, just make sure I've got the freshest, tastiest updates possible. So I'm gonna run a quick apt-get update and then an apt-get dist upgrade. That's gonna take a while. And uh, that's it, here we go. We're on the 55 network and we've got our first machine in our pen test network. Now, I'm gonna do a quick nmap scan to some hosts that I've got laid out here that I know are in some of my other networks and we'll make sure I can't pass traffic. And it looks like I cannot, so that's good. But let's actually do one other test just to, just to bury the hatchet and really make sure that absolutely nothing is traversing uh, between these two networks. So I'm actually going to refer us to my bpatty project on GitHub. If you look up the egress check framework entry, you'll see I've kind of written out everything step by step. Um, so what I'm going to do is on my new pen test Kali box, I am going to start the framework and set my source IP, which is you know my 55.242 address. I'm going to set my target IP to my Kali box in the dot three network. I'm going to try to pass all ports, all protocols over to this 3.x box. And this framework tool will generate a TCP dump command for me to run on my target, on my 3.x box. So here I've, I've run it here as a TCP dump to listen for, you know, any traffic coming from uh, my new pen test Kali box. And as you work your way further through the wizard, uh, it will generate a Python command that you're going to run right on this box. And what's nice too is they, they save it as a shell script, so <laughs> in case you lose it or you're having copy paste problems, uh, it'll be good to go. So you exit out of the tool, run that Python command, it will try to shove a buttload of traffic over to my target on the 3.x network. And uh, if we flip back over to that, we'll be able to see that uh, zero packets came through. So I think this scan was pretty clean. Now, um, if anything would get through, or if, if the, you know, the, the dump file was of any actual size, um, you would run these T-sharp commands to see exactly which TCP and UDP ports leaked through and then you can review your firewall config or ESX config to uh, to see what might have gotten gone wrong there and is allowing that traffic to traverse. All right, well that's what I wanted to show you for today's episode. I'm going to do one more next week, uh, a part three where between now and then I'm going to beef up the lab a little bit, but um, I just want to show you some of the pen testing tools and techniques uh, and we'll just kind of relax and have some fun. But my greater goal in this would, would be that, you know, with this little trilogy of videos, you'd be able to easily demonstrate to your boss or management that, hey, I need 500 bucks or I need a thousand bucks so that I can get this siloed pen testing lab. I can practice this stuff. I can sharpen my skills and I can better take care of and defend this network. Um, so I hope you have a great day and a blessed week. And if you need to get a hold of me, my contact information will follow uh, shortly. And uh, that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been watching or listening to an episode of 7 Minute Security, a weekly podcast focusing on IT and information security topics, such as penetration testing, network configuration, virtualization, and career advice. For more information, visit www.7ms.us.